and you look at the amount of transactions and prices and everything that was going on, do you look back at that moment and say, that was the greatest opportunity in the 2000s so far? What you're going to experience is later in five years, 10 years, whatever it is, you're gonna look back at 2022, 2023, 2024 and say, God, that was the greatest moment. So there's this group of sellers, of owners who want to sell, they need to upgrade, they need another bedroom, they wanna be on the water, they need to relocate, they're tired of their house, maybe they just want something bigger, maybe they want a bigger backyard, maybe they want a smaller yard, whatever it is, they wanna move. For me, I'm like, I'd rather just be chilling at the house while eight of my 17 listings are being shown by agents, other agents chasing buyers. You, it's your choice. You can chase owners or you can chase buyers. Every single person should be thinking, I'm going to get 30 listings between now and the end of the year. If you get 25, if you get 15, if you get 10, who cares? Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How we doing? Good. Realty One Group. A symbol. <laughs> hey. Cool, cool, cool. So um, everybody's in South Florida, right? Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so, you know, I could go tons of different directions with this. I think the most value will be me just telling you what I really think about the market right this second and where the real opportunities are. And then maybe open it up to some Q&A because that's really maybe where the most value could be helping you guys with your specific issues. How long do we have, Hermana? An hour. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. So where do I begin with this thing? This is, we're in the middle right now, the really the greatest opportunity in, you know, ever since 08. 08 2008 was really the the greatest opportunity of the last you know whatever however 15 years ago you know the the 2000s let's say um ever since the dot-com crash 9-11 from there till now 2008 was the greatest opportunity right and so if you look back at 2008 you and you 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 know what you know now about what's happened since then you look at 2008 you look at the amount of transactions that happen you look at the prices that that were going on at the time, you look at everything as a whole and you look back at that moment and you say, wow, <laughs> Did, or, or let me ask you guys, when you look back at 2008, if you have, and you look at the amount of transactions and prices and everything that was going on, do you look back at that moment and say, that was the greatest opportunity in the 2000s so far? Or do you look back and say, man, that that sounds rough to be in the business back then? I, I'm guessing most of you look back at 2008 and say, I wish I would have been in the business at that moment because you know what you know now. But when you're when you're in the middle of it, you, you're like, oh, God, the world's coming to an end. OK. And so I want you to think about that right this second, because what you're going to experience is later in five years. 10 years, whatever it is, you're going to look back at 2022, 2023, 2024 and say, God, that was the greatest moment to be in business. Because the fact is, is we're going to have the same amount of transactions this year as we had in 2008. If you look at a chart, you know, 2008 was the bottom and then it went up. 5 million, it stayed around 5 million transactions a year, existing homes. It hit 6 million in 2021 back to 5 million last year. And this year we're going to be around 4 million, which is what we experienced in 2008. So this is just like the absolute greatest opportunity. Why? Because when a market fluctuates like it is now every 10 years, it can hurt your business, say 20%, right? You know, 10, 20, 30%, but it doesn't go to zero. And this is what agents get confused about. They feel like the, their, their business is correlated to the market. 
but what I'm telling you is that the that the market can actually take a bite out of your business down 20%, 30%, whatever, but it can, at, <laughs> however, when the market rebounds, your business can literally double, triple, quadruple. Okay. Now, how many times in history has, have we seen a recessionary period in the housing market where transactions go down, you know, 10, 20, 30% and the market doesn't come back with a vengeance. It doesn't, resurge violently right there's not there's not a moment every single recessionary housing uh period is followed by a massive resurgence so we're, we're in the middle guys of something unlike we've ever seen before okay so think about this you have owners okay H how many of you just show of hands ha are, have, have talked to owners every single day well Number one, <laughs> some of you guys may not talk to any owners at all, which is a whole nother issue, okay, that we can address in some Q&A. But the, for those of you who actually talk to owners like you're supposed to as a real estate agent, how many of you are talking to owners every single day who want to move, would love to move, wish they could move, but they can't because of the interest rate situation? Right? Every single day. So there's this group of sellers, of owners who want to sell. They need to upgrade. They need another bedroom. They want to be on the water. They need to relocate. They're tired of their house. Maybe they just want something bigger. Maybe they want a bigger backyard. Maybe they want a smaller yard, whatever it is. They want to move. People want to move every, you know, what is it? Every seven years on average, people move. I mean, People want to move. They they <laughs> they really, really want to. So we're in this situation where they can't. So what is that doing? It's building demand. And every single day, this desire to move is growing. Okay. The people that have already entered that group, they want to even more and more and more and more every day. And then there's more people that decide, you know what? I really want to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in this group of people who want to but can't. And that, that group of people that want to but can't is growing like crazy right now. And so the cool thing is with rates is the longer rates stay up, the mat, the, the more <laughs> the more crazy the surge is going to be when this thing turns around. So just remember that. The longer that this goes on like it is now where the, the, the transactions are being compressed, depressed due to rates, is only building massive and crazy demand. Then you've got the 33-year-olds, more than we've seen in 20 years. Then these are first-time home buyers. You see all these articles about Gen Z, you know, and millennials, you know, don't want to own houses. They don't want to buy. And then you you read the article, you read the survey, and it's got like 12% Gen Z, 13% millennials don't want to own a house. And I'm like, what about the 80, 88%? What about the 80, you know, 2%? Do you tell me they want to own a house? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They want to own property. They don't want to be in a situation. Listen, there's plenty of people that want to rent, going to rent, love to rent. That's great. But rent goes up every year. If you get a 30-year fixed payment, it stays the same. And guess what? You're building equity. People view this differently. Some people are like, oh, house is the worst investment you can ever make. But most people realize it's the best investment they can make. So you've got this growing demand of first-time home buyers, and we don't even know it. We don't even know the amount of first-time home buyers that are that are just underlying, that are just dormant right this second, because they haven't even said anything, and they just became the age to that most people buy their first home. So what's going to happen? Okay, there's going to be this massive surge where the 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 trade up seller lists their property. Okay? That adds to inventory. Some people are saying, "Oh, that's going to add to inventory and make prices come down." Well, they're going to add a listing, but the only reason they're adding a listing is to take another listing off the market. Okay? It doesn't do anything. It's equal. So it's a net even for active listings, right? So that's a, that's a, that's a positive for new listings. That's a, that's positive too for transactions, but it's a net, it's a net even for active listings. Okay. 
So think about that scenario. The trade up seller adds two transactions to the market, one new listing to the market, but dead even when in active listings. Then at the same time, when that happens, because it's all going to happen at the same time, when interest rates come down into the, you know, under six or, you know, whatever that number is, everybody's going to come out at once. Okay. Ready to sell, ready to upgrade. The first time home buyers are going to say, I'm ready to buy. And so the first time home buyer comes, comes out in droves. And what do they do? They just take a listing off the market. So that's a net negative for active listings, but it's one on the on the chart for transactions. So what are we going to see? We're going to see transactions skyrocket. We're going to see new listings skyrocket. We're going to see active listings go from bad to worse. And we're going to see prices increase when all this happens. And so you, you, you see where active listings go from bad to worse. This is all my theory, by the way. <laughs> this is just what I think is going to happen. It makes perfect sense. When you see active listings drop, we're going to be sitting here thinking, oh, my God, inventory. You know, it's going to be tough. No, it's not going to be tough. If you have been doing what you're supposed to be doing right now and building your database to the point where all those sellers who want to upgrade call you to list their property, they're going to work with you to buy their next property. And all the first time home buyers are going to buy the listing of the, the trade up seller that you listed the property for. So they're going to be calling you, too, because you've got the listings. And all these listings are going to sell like that. Active listings are going to drop, but your transactions are going to shoot through the roof. It's going to be a lot like 2021. So that's kind of what I feel like is going to happen. Now, we're in a 10-year cycle. Transactions low is 2008. And we're in the, the yearly down cycle. You know, fall, winter is normally the down the downside of the yearly cycle. So there's yearly cycles and there's 10 year cycles. You, 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 if you want to stair step your income, you've got to, you know, sell when, when things are going crazy and then prospect when things are slow. That's how you stair step your income every single year. Well, how you, you know, that, that incrementally stair steps your income, you know, like I want to make a hundred more thousand a year. Okay. Boom. That's how you do that. But if you want to go to a half a million, a million, two million bucks, you take advantage of the moment right now. So the next 12 months, okay? And more importantly, the next, say, three to four months. The next three to four months literally could be the most crucial three to four months of your entire 20-year career. That's facts. And the next 12 months as a whole is really going to dictate what your, it could really set the entire, your entire career the vibe of your entire career from here on out. I want you guys to really understand how important the next three to four months are being in the middle of the down 10 year cycle and down yearly cycle all at the same time. This is like, this is like the Mecca of opportunity. Now moving over to just some mindset type things and then some tactical things and then Q&A, we're, we're in this place where, honestly, when I look at the industry as a whole, I think, damn, we're lazy. And the reason I'm saying that is because we've we've grown accustomed to the way that business is done nowadays in real estate. How is business done nowadays in real estate? Well, you find a buyer, okay, and then what do you do? You sit around and you wait on another agent to list a property your buyer might want. You just watch MLS. But, you know, Lord knows you're not going to go out there and try to find a property and, and talk directly to a seller of somebody who might own a property your buyer might buy. No, Lord knows we don't want to do that. If you list a property, you list it, and then you do what? Wait on another agent to bring the buyer. So you guys know our job as an agent is to connect buyers and sellers. That's our job. What we're doing, what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing that we're doing is that we're only doing half the job. We're finding the seller and then waiting on another agent to find the buyer or we're finding the buyer and we're waiting on another agent to find the seller. Why are we not if we find a buyer, especially in this market with no inventory, why are we not using that as an, as an excuse to get out here and talk to owners to find them a property? 
And by the way, if we don't find a form, but we picked up two listings in the process that our buyer didn't want, great. Or maybe we created, you know, 38 relationships with sellers through trying to find a property for the buyer we never found. They ended up buying something off MLS, but we created 38 new relationships with sellers who are going to do 10 to 20 deals with us over the course of our career. But we're not, we're not doing any of this. We're waiting on other agents to find sellers and listings while we're doing I don't know what. I just feel like, guys, we're lazy. Maybe you guys aren't, but this is just the way I feel about the industry overall. And so I just want to say that. <laughs> so hopefully, I don't know. Sometimes you hear stuff from people and it hits you different. And it starts to make you think. And then it starts to motivate you to maybe run your business differently. When we're in this low inventory market, you have to be talking to sellers, to property owners, or you're. it's going to be tough for you to keep your head above water. If it's me, all I'm going to do is talk to property owners. That's the only thing I'm going to do. Think about it like this. Every single agent is going to make money at six or seven o'clock at night. All of us. The only question is, is are you going to be the one at home chilling, eating dinner with your fam, out with your boys, doing whatever, while eight of your 17 listings are being shown at six and seven o'clock at night by agents doing YouTube videos and TikTok dances? Or are you going to be the one doing the YouTube to attract buyers to go show property at eight o'clock at night or have your buyer agents and now you're running a team and managing agents? For me, I'm like, I'd rather just be chilling at the house while eight of my 17 listings are being shown by agents, other agents chasing buyers. You, it's your choice. You can chase owners or you can chase buyers. The direction you can go with your business is absolutely your choice. And there's a million different ways you can do this. So then it comes down to efficiency. What's the most efficient way to go out here and build a million dollar business. Is anybody doing a million dollars in GCI on the call? Am I talking to a group of people who want to do a million dollars in GCI? The way that you get to a million dollars in GCI is because I, I did it as a single agent, no buyer's agent, no listing agent. I showed the properties. I went to all the listing appointments, uh, made all the calls. I didn't have a VA calling for me. I didn't buy leads. Um, I did everything. How was I able to do that by myself? Because a lot of people are like, how in the world? This is crazy, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, the reason they think it's crazy is because they're doing YouTube videos and or or they're buying Zillow leads or their 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 business is buyer base. I know a guy that did well down near 100 million bucks last year on YouTube. And he said 99% of his business was buyers. And he said he has a team of 20 agents he has to have to like manage all these buyers and stuff. And he pays them half and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, if you pay them half, then that means you really get paid on 50 mil if you did 100. And then, you know, all the other partners and everything else that he has, he's probably getting paid on like 10, 20 mil. If he would have did 10 to 20 mil on his own, he'd have been making about the same as 100 mil you know, this massive team and doing all these YouTube stuff. Like I've been, I've done 50 mil a year just on my own, not paying agents, not buying leads, none of that stuff. How did I do that? Well, you have to understand efficiency and how to leverage. Um, and so the, the, the greatest leverage for agents is listings. And we've got this lawsuit happening. A lot of people are asking me about the lawsuit. I'm getting asked about the lawsuit left and right, right and left. And the fact of the matter, guys, about this lawsuit is that, number one, it's a non-issue. I don't think anything's going to change. You know, they had MLS, the bright MLS, and there's another one somewhere else where they went from, you know, you had to offer at least a dollar or more to buyer's agents to zero. Guess what? Nothing has changed in those markets. They're still getting 6%. They're still splitting it with the buyer agent. Our industry is so accustomed to uh, the way things are done. Um, if we start to cut buyer agent off of this listing, but not this listing, so on and so forth, it's going to really hurt the exposure of the listing and everything. I don't think anything is going to change. However, if things were to change, 
and the mar the 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 industry did get flipped upside down. Number one, I think that would take like five or 10 years to like play out. I don't think it's like a switch that you can flip. But in fact, if it did happen, switch like, it, it just goes right back to what I'm saying here. If you're the listing agent, <laughs> none of that matters, right? Um, You know, I, I have an, an agent in Australia they operate like that. There's no buyer agents. The buyers go straight to the listing agent and stuff like that. And people are reaching out saying, oh, my God, do you think we're going to lose buyers? Do you think we're going to lose buyers if they have to now pay their own commission and stuff like that? I'm like, I hope so. <laughs> I hope we lose all the buyers. Um, I hope you lose all your buyers and you start working with sellers, start working with, with uh, property owners who want to buy or sell. This week, I actually, last week I went to Sarasota and spoke and just in the middle of the speech, um, it just kind of hit me and I was like, guys, cause I could just feel it in the crowd. Um, they just needed some, they needed somebody to like really, you know, push them. So I was like, okay, let's make a pact. Like you guys go out there between now and the end of the year and go get 30 listings, you know, 30 listings between now and end of the year. That's what all of you need to be focused on between now and the end of the year. What is it? October, November. That's 10 listings a month. So what is that? Two and a half a week? Is that two and a half a week? Two and a half listings a week? Um, I mean, <laughs> like, who wants to do that? Okay. So the, then the question becomes, all right, let's see. What am I? Let me see. I got to see this comment. What are you saying? Let's see, da, 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 da. combination of models that we use for real. Well, I don't know what you're saying there, F.A. F.A., you there? Go ahead and unmute. I'd love love to hear this. Anybody know what, uh, Minor, what, what is F.A. trying to tell me here? Hi, Ricky. How are you? This is Faisal uh, from Realty One Group Plus. Okay. How are you? Good to see you. Good yeah, to see you. Um, actually, you didn't see me yet. No. <laughs> um yeah i i actually um well, i was actually uh responding to one of your comment like who is the million dollar agent we are projecting to be fairly close uh but we used a combination of different real estate models slash transactions that helps us uh, achieve um those high numbers um Miner and Jimena are of, uh, familiar with our our model and which we are we will going to talk about in, in the event that we are mutually having with you and uh, and Juan. Um, so uh, so not just the normal real estate transactions, we are, um, our background or our <clears throat> real estate, um, the background is mostly we started as investments. So obviously real estate investments. So we use combination of models that help us um, achieve higher financial goals. So yeah. I was just answering your question. We okay. uh, we are projecting to be fairly close. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice work, nice work. Yeah, but it is. Uh, yeah, but it is not just uh, regular conventional real estate transaction. We are we think out of the box to uh, to make our com uh, our uh, earnings higher. Ah, thanks 100%. for letting me speak. Hundred percent. Cool. So, okay, l let's think about the market right here, okay? Where's the opportunity, right? You, every single person should be thinking, I'm going to get 30 listings between now and the end of the year. If you get 25, if you get 15, if you get 10, who cares? Go for 30 right now. That should be your goal every day. D does everybody here go for listings, right? Or, or or do we have, you know, people that are like, oh, I wanted to be a buyer's agent, stuff like that. My question, if you were like a buyer's agent, that's what you choose to be. My question would be why? Love to hear from some of you guys, but think about the market right now. Okay. The only people buying right now, okay, the only people buying or selling are the people that have to. Agreed? Nobody that wants to buy or sell or what if they could. They're okay. So there's 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 two different prospects right now. And you guys got to get better at categorizing your prospects. When you talk to a prospect, okay, you're trying to turn every single prospect into a deal today. You know, you're you're asking me. Uh, Ricky, the seller wants to sell, but worried about interest rates. What do I do? You tell them, great. Do you have an agent you're going to work with whenever interest rates turn around? You decide to do something. I'd love to work with you when that day comes. And get their information. Do the weekly email and keep moving. Um, 
we're trying to like we're hanging out we're 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 spending too much time with prospects that are you know they want to you got to realize right now it's only the people that have to so spend time with them i'm not saying don't i'm not saying don't follow up i'm not saying don't see where it goes but have your systems in place to stay in touch with them forever okay but where you're going to make your money now are the people that a have to buy and sell and b investors all right investors buy no matter what the market's doing okay they buy and sell i'm closing on four properties this week two new constructions one one existing that we remodeled and a commercial unit um you know i'm buying and selling every single month so investors so what we want is we want to have our prospecting strategy set up where we're looking for the people that have to buy and sell. We're taking the people that we talk to that we have a great connection with that aren't ready to buy or sell or don't necessarily need to right this second. We have a system on the back end where they never forget us so that when the market turns around, this is how you double and triple and quadruple your business when the market turns around. All the people that don't buy and sell now that you're talking to, those are the people that will triple, quadruple your business in the next three to four years. But you got to have a system in place where they never forget who you are. Um, I can share my system with you if you guys would like. Um, we can talk about that in the in the Q and A. All right. So so let's but let's break it down though. The people that have to, then there's the people that want to, then there's the investors. That that should be your kind of like outlook here. People that need to, that's money now. People that that want to that's what's going to triple your business in two to three to four years and then the investors who are buying and selling constantly right investors are buying now they're selling now if the market goes down and prices go down what are they going to do they're going to buy and sell if the prices go up what are they going to do buy and sell they're going to do this regardless so we need to start creating a list you need to create a list of the people that need to buy and sell soon that you run into prospecting then you need to make a list of investors and what they're looking for then you've got your list of people that want to well we're not really going to make a list of them we're just going to put them in our database send them our weekly emails whatever we do and they'll call us when the market reverses this is it this is this is the, i just laid it out for you exactly what you should be thinking about right this second and how you can you know, keep your head above water with the need to clients. And there's plenty of them. Just look in your MLS at how many closings are happening every single day. There's plenty of people buying and selling. There's not a shortage of deals for you to go out and work on. Then you've got your investors. You need to be developing that database of investors. And then you've got the people that really aren't going to buy or sell today, but they're going to be responsible for your business doubling and tripling over the next three to four years. Okay. So let's talk about investors. How do we build that, that list? Every single conversation you have, regardless of what your lead generation is, Zillow, Facebook, Instagram, cold calling, expires for sale by owners, geo leads, sphere of influence, whatever it is, at the end of every conversation, you say, hey, thanks for your time. Listen, before, before I let you go, let me ask you this one thing. If I had a smoking hot deal, a great deal on a rental property, would you be interested? And then just see what they say. Then, based on their response we can dive into the the specific uh, the specifics you know do you like multifamily single family you know commercial industrial warehouse what do you like then you can start really developing this list of investors all right very 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 important in this market to develop that list and then guess what you've got this investor where now you can take their criteria and start prospecting properties that they might be interested in and guess what's going to happen there? You're going to run into more investors. <laughs> if that's investor, if that's what this investor likes, then that's probably what this investor owns. And they probably want other investment properties as well. This is a game that I believe that you guys should really go all in with the investor game. As far as listings go, if you want listings right now, okay, right this second, what do you have to do? Put it in the comments. If you if you want listings, okay, if we want to go after 30 listings by the end of the year, 
If we want to go after 30 listings by the end of the year, that means we need listings right now. So if we want listings right now, what do we have to do? I think you're, I think you guys are right. In my opinion, you're right. You got to think about where a listing comes from. A listing comes from a property owner who decided to sell their property. And then they had an agent they had a relationship with that they called to list the property. That, that's how listings work. They had a friend in the business. So what now becomes the objective? To become friends with property owners. That's it. That's your job now, to become friends with as many property owners as possible. So when we think about that, okay, well, we could just call all the property owners. That's circle prospecting. It's called circle prospecting. Just call a subdivision around listings and sales and activity and stuff like that. You've got that method. You've got for sale by owners. You can talk to property owners. You've got expireds. Talk to property owners. You've got door knocking. You can talk to property owners. And then you've got like social media. Well, how could you do there, Ricky? Well, you could DM. You could find property owners on, on social, on Instagram and Facebook. You could like stalk them and DM them. Um, what are some other ways, guys, that you can literally directly talk to property owners and communicate with property owners? Okay. You can DM them. You can door knock. You can call expired for sale by owner circle prospecting. Right? There's only like a handful of different activities here. So we think about all the different activities and then let's think about what is the, well, with direct mail, it's like you're mailing and then you're waiting on them to contact you. It's nothing that I can just talk to them right now. Right? W what I want is I want to talk to and communicate with property owners right now, as many as I want to for the next two or three hours. Think about it. If you want listings right now, Listings come from a property owner that decided to sell who called the agent that they have a relationship with to list the property. So if I want listings, I have to create relationships and connections with property owners in the market. And whoever creates the most wins the most listings. So when I think about all the different uh, actions that I can do to directly talk to you know, property owners, for me, the most efficient one that I've, that I've just fell in love with is calling two to 18 month old expireds. Two to 18 month old. And you can get those on Red X. Boom, like snap of a finger, you can get 10 years worth of data. And, you know, two years, I mean, two months back, it's like most, I think if you look at the statistics, most expireds relist within like a couple of months, two to three months or something like that. It's not like the next day. Some of them do list, relist immediately, but not all of them. Um, and I'll call them, the day they expire, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just saying the sweet spot seems to be for me and my group and my coaching students, it seems to be two to 18 month old expires. And these are just incredible conversations because you're coming in with this genuine curiosity about the property. <clears throat> so number one, when I'm prospecting, I'm never calling to try to sell the property, to list the property, to sell this property to a buyer. What I'm doing is I'm using the property as an excuse to get into a conversation to see if I can connect with this prospect, with this property owner, with this possible buyer. If they inquire about a property online, I'm using that as an excuse to call them to see if I can connect and see what's going on, right? So it's like, you know, hey, I saw you were looking at this property online or whatever. You know, I'm just calling to see what's going on here. You know, tell me what's happening. I'm trying to understand what their story is and I'm trying to get them to lay it out for me. Cause I can get, if I can get them talking about their situation, then I have won. There's a good chance that I've won the entire game right there. Deal done. Same thing with expireds, you know, Hey, it's Ricky, whatever real estate company, whatever area, how you doing today? Cool. Me too. I'm enjoying the days in a gorgeous. Listen, I don't want to take it too much of your time, but I saw you were trying to sell this house at one point. Whatever happened with that? I'm just going to see if there, if, if, if you know, what happened there. And then you let them tell you the story about that house and where what's going on with it. They sold it. They rented it. They still have it. They still live there. Whatever it is, then you can just have a, a like a candid conversation with them from there about what it is that they got going on, what they're looking to do real estate wise, and how you can help them. It, it's it's the most it's the most incredible conversations I've ever had with prospects to call these older expireds and just understand what happened with this property. 
Um, I don't do research to see if it's sold. I don't care if it's sold. Again, I'm not calling to list this property. I'm calling to use it as an excuse to talk to the prospect to see what's going on and see what I can help them with. Most, most, I'm I'm talking more than 50%. So most of the expires that I did business with, I represented them as a buyer's agent. They bought something. You know, most, most uh, agents are following you know, the standard mainstream scripts of trying to set the appointment and handle objections and get the listing, right? And I smoke those agents all day long because I'm not trying to get the listing. I'm trying to get to know the owner and see what it is they want to do and why. And if there's if there's an opportunity for me to help them do it. So for example, a um, bunch of different, I give you a bunch of different stories, but I'll call a property owner and expired. You know, there it was a house in Fairhope and, um, you know, just got to talking to them, come to find out through the conversation they're they don't really care if they sell that or not. What they really wanted to do is buy this other property a lot, you know, really want to buy a lot over here and build, build a house. And I'm like, great. So then I go down that road and guess what? I sell on this lot. It's like 130,000 selling this lot versus you know, let me come by and show you, show you how we can get this house sold. And, you know, but I never even met this gentleman. I never set an appointment. I never, any of that literally did all this stuff electronically. He went to the lot. He looked at it. He drove past it. He knew which one he wanted. I made the offer for him. I never met this gentleman face to face. And I feel like you could be losing some of these deals if we're so focused on getting that listing, setting that appointment, you know, be a little more open-minded, talk to this person like they're your mom, dad, brother, cousin, and see what opens up. You know, you don't have to fast play this stuff. Take it slow, relax, let it develop, right? Ask questions, understand what's going on behind the scenes. Make sense? So I think that there are probably in you guys' area, I would think that there's probably a good, I don't know, Hundred thousand, maybe uh, fifty to a hundred thousand expireds in the last two years. I would, I would imagine something like that. I mean, how long is it going to take you to call fifty thousand people or hundred thousand people? Not going to happen ever. I doubt you'll ever get through the list in your entire career. That's what I think. And this is just expires. This isn't even like talking about for sale by owners, uh, geo leads you know, door knocking, et cetera. But man, just the incredible conversations and the business that that comes out of this. So I believe that if I were going after these 30 listings over, you know, for the next three months, I'd be calling these uh, old expires till my ears bled every day. Yeah. And then I'd make a few videos when I got bored. I'd make a uh, I might make a couple of videos in between, take a little break, make a video, make some more calls, make a video, make some more calls, make a video. And so with social media, okay, a lot of a lot of agents are using it to attract buyers. That for me, that's okay if you're trying to attract them to your listing. If you're just trying to just attract buyers for no reason, just to get buyer leads, I think that's a very inefficient use of your of your you know your social media bandwidth and um, your business in general. So what you should be doing is you should be showcasing your listings to try to attract buyers to your actual listing A and B, you should be trying to create engaging content that that gets a lot of engagement and views and shares and then use the impressions and views and engagement of your entire, account at listing appointments, right? So you go to a listing appointment or you're trying to win over the listing, you know, from they're interviewing three agents, but it's like you get, you know, 20,000 views a month, you know, or you get, I don't know what your guys's impressions and stuff are, you know, you reach 50,000 people a month via your Instagram, you know, uh, impressions. You know, I get 50,000 impressions a month on my social media. I'm going to be pushing your property there. That's how you use social media, ladies and gentlemen, to get listings. You create engaging content. You use the analytics of your profile to impress the seller that you're going to push 
their property on your platform. And that's unique because every agent can put the property on MLS, right? All right, I could keep going here. We're getting in the weeds. 15 more minutes. Q&A, what you guys got? You have some questions in the chat. Plan you propose for single agents to list 10. What does it matter if they're single agents or team or I don't know what that would matter, but but let's see. You just asked that and I just gave out the plan. The plan is to talk or if you want to break it down into numbers, let's see. How could I break this down? Look, call property owners from nine to 12 every day. That's it. Call property owners from 9 to 12 every day. Don't, with the objective to get to know the seller, to figure out what it is that they want to do and why. Establish if they have an agent they're working with already and put together a plan to help them accomplish whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. That's it. If you if you create five new friends with property owners a day, okay, the 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 long tail, if you if you create five new friends of property owners a day, okay, 250 working days a year, six or five years, that's 6,000 property owners that you made friends with. If you're doing a weekly email on the same day of the week forever, and you've got 6,000 property owners you talked to over the last five years, getting this weekly email, staying in touch with you, keeping your face in front of them, okay, keeping that great first impression, the warm and fuzzies from the first from the great first impression alive. How big is your business? Just think about it. Go ahead, Brian. How are you, Ricky? Good morning. Good morning. Brother, quick question. What does a perfect day for you look like? Meaning getting up, prospecting, X amount of the whole day. Um, so I want to study the MLS hot sheet every day for like 15 minutes. Okay. I just want to scan through new listings, close, pendings, just all of it. If I see something that stands out like a property in my farming area or uh, something in a subdivision that I sold to a guy or, um, you know, maybe it's a property that I've got a buyer that's looking for that that kind of criteria. So I click on it, look at more details and pictures and who the agent is. I may see something that sold in a subdivision I'm familiar with. Let me click on it, see how many days it took to sell and who the agents were that sold it and what was the selling price and stuff like that. Just becoming familiar with the market. If you spend 15 minutes a day doing this, you're a market expert in literally a few weeks. And you just continue to stay on top of the market. It just becomes second nature. You know everything about the market. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I'm going to call property owners from 9 to 12. And then all afternoon, I'm going to do handwritten letters. I may show some property. I might make some videos. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do the rest of the day, right? Um, the four most important activities for an agent is negotiating, writing offers, showing property, and going to listing appointments. Okay, so again, negotiating offers, writing offers, going to listing appointments, and showing property, right? Those four activities supersede calls. If I have to do one of those four things, if I can't put, I'm going to try to push it off to the afternoon. But if I can't, I'm okay with missing my call session because guess what? Those One of those four things are way more important than making calls, right? That's one thing you guys got to get through your head is like, oh, I missed my calls today because I was selling properties. And they get down, down on themselves. I'm like, you're selling properties. Like you're doing the things that you're supposed to do to sell properties. When you should be getting down on yourself is when you're not making your calls because you're making social media videos or you're looking up properties for buyers, you know, and sending buyer reports or doing CMAs or, you know, writing blog that, that if, if you're not, if you're not, if you're, if you're doing that over making calls, then you've got a thing, your priorities backwards, make your calls and then do all that stuff in the afternoon. But if you've got to show property, great, go show property. Let's sell some stuff. Know what I mean? But outside of that calls from nine to 12, you guys might be thinking, oh, I don't want a cool call. Well, that's weird to hear that, number one, because you got in this business. It's you're, you're in sales, by the way, and you got in this business to help people you don't know how buy and sell real estate. So it's like, OK, that doesn't sound like I'm here to get it done kind of attitude. That kind of sounds like I don't really want this as bad as Ricky does. Everybody should want it as bad as me. Um. 
But I mean, I know I know a young lady. She does Facebook ads, gets a bunch of Facebook leads, and she calls them all day between nine and twelve every day. Facebook leads. You know, that's what that's her calls. Facebook leads. You know what I mean? Like call somebody. But um, I was talking to that lady, by the way, and I was like, and she was telling me how bad the Facebook leads are and, you know, all this. And I'm like, you're making calls anyway between nine and 12. Why aren't you just calling property owners? You know, because like she'll call a Facebook lead and they don't know who she is or, you know, they cuss her out. Like It's all the same stuff. Why not spend that time being the most efficient calling property owners? That's the, that's the highest quality prospects. They already own the property. You know, they they buy and sell stuff all the time. Was that it, okay. Brian? Yeah, I don't know. You actually hit it right on the spot. Thank you. Uh, another question. Um, now, form of like lead generation when you were, you know, when you first started out, like, what did you do other than the calls? I'm assuming you did door knocking, mailers. No, I like never, that. I never did door knocking. I didn't have to because when I got to calls, they worked, and so I didn't have to go. Like calls was maybe like the third thing I did. And it worked, so I didn't go any further. I just stuck to that. When you find what works, guys, you go all in. Okay. Um, but also, you got to realize I grew up roofing houses. And I actually worked on an oil rig for a while in between. And so you think I'm going to go back outside and work? <laughs> back out there in the hot sun, walk around and work and sweat? I'm not going to do that if I can sit in the AC. I can sit in the air condition and just call people. This is nuts. Like, this is dream this is dreamy to me. Like just calling people on the phone and helping them buy and sell real estate. It's crazy. We're a hundred percent spoiled, but, um, I did direct mail. Uh, we didn't have social media. We didn't have nothing, bro. We didn't have, we didn't have Zillow. We didn't have, we didn't have, uh, apps. We didn't have auto dialers. We didn't have nothing. We didn't have DocuSign, nothing. Um, I did direct mail. I did email and phone calls. That's all I did. Yeah. Now, when it comes to direct mail, did you only target a specific area? Yeah. Or did you? Okay. Just subdivisions, condo complexes, stuff like that. I wouldn't do direct mail now because social media is so much better, more efficient, cheaper, easier, more effective. Okay. Uh, social media is just way better than direct mail, you know, and it's free. And if you want to run free. some ads, if you want to run ads, I mean, you know, you can get people for like a penny or two versus a dollar for a postcard, you know? So it's, it's just way more social media is way more efficient than direct mail. Now, if you want to do a handwritten letter with a handwritten envelope, with a handwritten letter on the inside, asking them if they would consider selling their property to a prospect of yours, those are very effective. Those do okay. really well. Um, um, you know, you could do just listed, just sold, uh, just pended postcards to an area, but the cool, what you have to do Dur during any deal you guys have, when you list a property from listing to sold, you've got to call that subdivision, all the other owners in there during the deal, right? You got, you got to, it, it takes like an hour, like an hour to, to look them up and call every one of them. It takes like an hour with the auto dialer and red X, look up the subdivision, boom, it literally an hour. You know, you've got an hour within the 45 days from listing to sold to call the subdivision to try to create more relationships to leverage that listing, leverage that deal and possibly even get another listing. You know, it's like a 60 or 70% chance that when a listing hits in a subdivision, another listing is going to pop up in that same subdivision within 30 days. Okay. Um, you, you've got to get in there, get your hands dirty, talk to these people. <laughs> if they don't know you, they're, they're not going to do business with you. Any other question? Christian, minor. No, I don't know. Who who who's gonna go do? Who's right gonna who wants? I mean, are you guys? Is this on? Like, are are you guys gonna go get thirty more listings? Is this? Are y'all gonna go for that, or not? And if you're not, tell me why. Like, unmute and let's talk. I want to hear. I want to hear what's happening. This is in my in my case. This is what uh, we're going for. Despite that, there there's some real numbers, some prospecting that. Uh, that we have to abide to. For example, uh, in my case, I'm not saying that it is uh, everyone's number is the same, but in my case, to get one leasing appointment per day, I need to contact 30 people. I need to actually talk to 30 people, right? And mm. uh, then uh, if I get one leasing appointment per day, uh, 
Mm. Uh, at the end of the week, I will sit only with one because uh, after pre-qualification, I might decide not to go to that listing presentation or the customers uh, I, I, might after, decide After what, to you might not decide to go? You say what, Christian? After, after, you, after what, you might not decide to go? Uh, after the pre-qualification. Uh-huh. I might decide not to not to go to some of them, and some of them may decide not to interview me. Okay. So out of every five listing appointments I set on the phone, I sit with one. I have a really good record. If, if, if I sit with 10 of them, I probably will close nine or, or, or 10 of them. But What, what would be a pre-qualifying situation where you wouldn't want to go to the listing appointment anymore? If I don't see that they're really uh, they're they have a good motivation, I try to find out the three what we uh -huh. call the three W's: when, why, and where are mm -hmm. are they moving. And yeah. if I feel or if I notice that one person says, you know, I just want to sell for the sake of selling, I really so don't do know you. So do you? So 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 you set the appointment and then you pre qualify them. Yes. 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 On, on the same on, on call. The same Yes. Mm -hmm. So why would they accept? Uh, so they're like, oh, yeah, come by. But then you're like, OK, great. I can come by. Let me ask you these few questions uh, before. So what I do up front, I tell them that that I'm going I'm trying to apply for the job of selling their property. I'm not lying that I want to see it uh, or that I want to learn their situation. It's like my position is clear here. I want to offer you a way uh, to, to, another way to sell your property. If you are interested, we can uh, sit down. I can show you what I can do. And if you like it, we can work together. If not, we're going to shake hands and and keep doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. if, this, if they say, okay, perfect. I, uh, and I get the appointment, then I got this uh, prequel questionnaire. No, you cannot see it. That's okay. I can see, uh, I have a prequel questionnaire. I go through the entire situation. Mm -hmm. With a lot of questions, they actually really like it because then they tell me that uh, no other agent ask him these type of uh, questions. Mm -hmm. I prepare a pre-leasing package with all the information they need to see, and and, and I send it to them. And then I pre-qualify them for the second time to see if they have read the package, if all the information. Uh, they receive if was is what they want, and if they need any more information, if they say, "Chris, uh, everything looks good except for this, this, and that," I go to the appointment and I try to overcome those objections. Yeah, right. And in, if I notice that it's a person that has absolutely no motivation to sell, but they want to sell for one million dollars, a property that worth six hundred thousand. I prefer to be the second of the third leasing agent and not yeah. the first one who's going to be working all year uh, yeah. to not sell the property. I, I'll be the one that takes it for a meal and sells it for 600 Me too. But in in, in my experience, yeah, I, never, I never let them expire. Yeah, I never let them expire, number one. And then number two, I'm working with the seller the whole time, you know. Number one, I'm setting expectations. Like it's not going to sell for this. Chances are like, I'm not the God because things I think will never sell, sell in a day. And things I think will sell in a day, never sell happens all the time. I'm, I've never have been able to be like, you know, the God of this, like it, like it, the market has a mind of its own crazy, the craziest things have happened. And so, yeah, I mean, from 600 to a million, that's a little, that's a stretch. Um, but we've done it. I've got one. I'll give you an example. I've got one that was worth seven fifty. They listed it for one point two five. Guess what I did? Took it. Now what? It's been about a year, a little over a year. They lowered it a couple times. Had an offer for eight hundred, which is crazy. That was that was more than he he you know, negotiated. Turned it down. We had another offer for eight fifty later on. You know, didn't make that work. He lowered it under a mill. Now we've got it at eight ninety nine. Now we're getting real close. So we yeah. all we're almost there. We're gonna sell that property. Just one, just one, you know, story. Uh, I take them because again, I'm not connected to the deal. I'm connected to trying to trying to capture this relationship forever. The way that I handle an overpriced listing can really dictate 
to them who I am and how I operate and how they don't ever want to use another agent ever again in their life, right? This gives me an opportunity to prove to them who I am, how I handle business. Um, two different schools of thought. And I'm if, if somebody offers, especially a property owner, for me to go go meet with them, I'm going to take it every time, even if, in fact, they don't even want to sell. Why? Because the more time I've wasted on people, the more money I've made. And if I go create this relationship face to face, oh, there, there's a there's really a slim chance they're ever going to use a different agent once they realize how much I actually care about them in person. And they really feel that energy because over the phone, through video, that's one thing. In person is totally different. If I can ever get in front of a property owner for any reason, I'm going to do it, regardless of whatever they, if, even if they don't want to sell for five years, let me let me go meet with you. For me, that's time well spent. They're going to refer people to me in the meantime. And so many times people have told me not going to sell for five years. Guess what? List it 30 days later. So many times, ridiculous amount of times. I just don't ever turn it down. But again, too, I love your process. By the way, um, I like your process a lot because it's very direct and it says, hey, I want to, you know, show you how I can get your property sold if you're interested. You know, let's meet. Here's some pre-qualifying questions. I love it. I love it. Um, my process is different. I want to kind of pre-qualify them in the very beginning. What is it that you want to do and why? I'm not really going for the appointment either at all. So it's two different things, but I love what you have going on. Is it Durania? Durani, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Durani. Durani. I almost had it. <laughs> it's okay. Going back to when you have a listing in your area, um, a little guidance on what that conversation would be like over the phone. So, I, I missed it. What? Uh, going back to if you have an area, a, a house that you're listing in an area, what is that conversation like with the people that you're calling? The other owners in the um. Right. That are around that listing. Oh, you're, you're basically calling to introduce yourself. You know, hey, is this Miss Johnson? Hey, Miss Johnson. <laughs> it's it's Ricky over at wherever real estate company, you know, in this area. I like to say all that. I like to say my name, the company I'm with and the area I'm in, because then it, because they because they could think, well, this is like a spam call from Arkansas. Right. Or this, you know, I'm from Realty One Group. They're thinking, oh, God, this is this is a call center in Phoenix. But if you're like, hey, you know, this is who I am. This is the company I'm with. I'm a local real estate agent right here, right down the road from you in blank Miami Lakes. Then they have this automatic connection with you. Then they're combining the connection with the area with your tone. Right now, that's combining to give them real comfortability. Now they're really feeling like, okay, this is somebody in my backyard. It sounds really nice. Um, then you're like, you know, there's whoever, whatever area, blah blah blah. How you doing today? Cool, me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? You know, you guys getting out and about. Cool. Listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I just listed this property right down the road from you. I didn't know if you saw that. I was going to let you know and just reach out, introduce myself, see if there's anything in the world I can do for you today. And then you just listen to them, right? Just listen to them. See if they say anything interesting, right? Then you could take it so many different directions. But at the end of the day, you want it to go in a direction of if they're not, if they are looking to do something, great. Is there an agent you're working with on that? And then go down that road. If they're not looking to do anything, great. Is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? Right. I would love the opportunity to work with you. And that day comes. Is it OK if I stay in touch? Cool. What's a good email? Let me put a couple of. Uh, let me put a couple of links here. So I got. I got my scripts, RC scripts. Dot com. I got. Red X discount dot com. I got. Weekly email, start my weekly email.com. There yeah. we go. And I'm doing, I'm going to do this training Friday on 30 listings over the next 90 days. Friday. Cause I'm just going to go hard. I'm going to go hard on this. Like everybody should be going after that. Brian's friend. What's up? <laughs> what's up ricky uh really quick i wanted to ask 
what type of prospect would you aim for first? Like, would it be fizzbulls or would it be expired? It doesn't really like matter, bro. Um, as long as you're talking to property owners, for me, it would be because think about it in this in this low inventory environment. OK, think about this, guys. If we're calling random property owners, what's the most the highest case scenario? Right. The most likely scenario is that they're sitting on three and a half percent mortgage rate and they're not going to sell today. Right. That's the most likely scenario. 90% of mortgages are under 6%. Now, 45% of properties are owned free and clear. You know, some of these people are investors. Like, there's business that can come from that, of course. However, if you think about for sale by owners, which I hate, by the way, <laughs> like for sale by owners are not my thing, but uh, but that is low-hanging fruit. That, But you have to just follow up so much with the for sale by owners because they don't want an agent. You got to kind of like work with them, create the relationship, stay in touch until they throw in the towel and allow an agent to list the property. Um, but expireds, right, man? These dude, two, that two to 18 month old expired is just, to me, that's just where it's at. Like, there's just so much business there. Two to 18 months. Perfect. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, Ricky. I appreciate it. Uh, I think Samir had asked a question there, Rick. Who? Samir, he was asking if Reddix is the best site for uh, lead generation. I think so. I think so. Um, I'll put a discount link there. I think so. Um, expireds plus, go back 10 years worth. Like when you when you get it, call Red X and say, hey, I want I want 10 years worth of expireds, withdrawns and cancels. And don't filter out the ones that, re that sold. I want the whole list. Um, Geoleads plus, expireds plus, and the multi-line dollar. I'll tell you another one. That nobody's hitting that's straight gold is the for rent by owners. It's 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 owners who manage their own properties and are trying to currently rent their property. That's that's on Red X. They have for rent by owners, right? They upload whoever pops up uh, in the market trying to rent their home by owner in that little folder for rent by owners. That is gold because that goes back to what I was saying about and create your investor list. These are investors who manage their own properties. It's straight gold. It's like, I see you're trying to rent this house. Tell me what's going on. You know, would you be interested in other rental properties? Right. Are you currently looking for other rental properties? Are you adding to your portfolio? Like, you know, what can I help you with? Because investors, man, they'll go with whatever agent brings them the deal. I have Valerie asking if you can repeat the list. Which list? Oh, oh, oh. Geo Leads Plus. Expireds plus, and the and the multi get a multi line dialer, get an auto dialer, and they'll also give you a certified Google number. I forget what they call it. You want to get that too, number? huh? A smart number that they have. Smart number, whatever it is. Yeah, you want to get that too. Put it in the caller ID thing, so you're you can like prevent the whole spam, and get for rent by owners. Man, that, for rent by owners and expire eighteen two to eighteen month old expires and for rent by owners. That'd be my favorite. Ricky, one no. no more question. Um, how would you would like your schedule? Would you just spend all day prospecting and then maybe you know Facebook ads, or would you say um it's important to get out there, let people know? Because I'm in the office all day and I'm pretty sure nobody knows who I am. Until I, you know, post on social media. But then I have a, you know, you hear talk from other agents that like, oh, yeah, you know, like I, I just go out and, you know, when you're at the bar, the conversation comes across. I know a lot of agents like that. Um, I know I know a lot of agents that go out, they do all their business at the bar, they stay out all night and they do these big development deals. They do big commercial deals. They, you know, they do a lot of business and everything. That's their thing. Maybe that's your thing. I don't know. It wasn't my thing. When I was out in public, I didn't want anybody to know I'm an agent. That's how introverted I am. Like some people wear name tags and walk around the grocery store and stuff. And I'm like, don't have a name tag. You know what I mean? Um, So may maybe your thing is going out in public, right? So yeah, make calls for a while and then like go out and network. If that's your thing. I don't know what your thing is. You got to figure out what your thing is. And go all in on your thing. Definitely. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Keep that in mind. So. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ricky.
we'll see you guys in uh next month. Yes, sir. October 20th. All right. Looking forward to seeing you guys there. First 100. I got a, I got books for the first 150 through the door. Free Damn, books. I was trying to keep that a secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, the secret is out. <laughs> see you guys.